Okay, uh, hello everyone. Yeah, as, as said, my name is Phil Ewells, spot on. Uh, <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here today. It's my first Bosque after wanting to come for several years, so uh, it's great to be here. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about MultiQC, which is my, my visualization tool. Um, oh, converted this from keynotes, we'll see how it goes. Uh, um, I work at the National Genomics Infrastructure in Sweden, which is kind of like a core sequencing lab, but for, for the whole country. Uh, it's part of SciLife Lab, and users come to us with, with projects, and, and we, we do the library prep with sequencing and some bioinformatics work for them. Um, we're a fairly big center. We've got quite a lot of machines, and we process thousands of samples every year. Um, it's a lot of sequencing data, and we have to perform quality control analysis on, on all of these samples before sending back to the user to make sure that nothing's gone horribly wrong, basically. Um, a couple of years ago, much of this work was done on the command line, basically, kind of running tools, having a quick check of various stats, so a few scripts to, to uh, tidy stuff together, and often kind of cherry picking a few reports to make sure that the project looks okay. And uh, generally, it was a pretty kind of horrible experience. <laughs> uh, it was boring, it was difficult, it was easy to miss things, um, and it just wasn't really ideal. So. My plan with MultiQC was to try and um, make this a more visual experience, a, an easier experience there where we can easily spot outliers and identify problems before they go any further. So, oh, first bug. Uh, MultiQC um, is designed to handle and generate reports for multiple samples uh, and for multiple types of input. So if you run uh, your analysis pipeline through a bunch of different tools that will, will pull all of those together um, for, for your whole project and it will give you one single report where you can get an, an overview of the whole process and see how it's worked. Um, it's worth pointing out for those of you not familiar with MultiQC that it doesn't actually run any of these tools yourself. You still have to do your normal analysis pipeline using kind of CWL or <laughs> whatever kind of workflow you like. Um, on the whole, it doesn't actually calculate any new statistics. It just kind of more likes to pull in summary stats from other tools which are already generated. Um, and although it generates an HTML report, it, it can work completely offline. Um, it's, it doesn't require any, any external dependencies or anything. So this is a, a screenshot of one of the very first prototypes where uh, it was originally designed just to kind of put together FastQC reports. Um, and then that kind of progressed to something a bit uglier, but a bit more familiar. Um, and finally, today, this is kind of roughly what multi-QC reports look like, just to give you a feel for, for what you get. So you kind of tables and, and plots and everything split up into different sections based on what tool the, the output came from. Um, and I try and make as much effort into making the data easy to visualize. So you don't just get tables full of numbers, you, we try and kind of color them and give bars and stuff. So you can get a quick summary and, and it kind of scan through and anything that's different or, or odd really jumps out at you. So how does it work? Um, it's a Python tool um, it's, and it's um, written, written basically in pure Python, has a few dependencies but not many. Um, and you run it on the command line and you give it one or, or several directories or files and it will look through those paths um, recursively and find any files it can and it looks through and kind of um, matches those up to different modules. Um, modules within the, the Python code then pass those files and pull out the important information, and then finally there are, there are templates to actually generate the HTML. On the front end, um, the HTML is built around the bootstrap framework, uh, and dynamic plots are rendered using um, the high charts graphing library, and there's a whole bunch of kind of jQuery and custom JavaScript code to run the other interactive tools. One of the questions I get quite a lot uh, with MultiQC is that that's great. You know, my demo had like 10, 15 samples, but, but I've got this huge data set. And almost as soon as I released it, someone tried to run it on some single cell data set with like 3,000 samples. Um, so does it scale? Um, by default, MultiQC uses high charts, which is great. It gives these nice interactive plots. But that means it has to embed the raw data in, in the report itself into the HTML. It's a single file. Um, and when we start to really scale to big, large numbers, the reports get very big, huge file sizes, and the browser is not able to necessarily handle that amount of data. So to get around that, there's a, a threshold, and over a certain number of, of samples, you can configure or disable this if you want to. Um, MultiQC instead renders flat image plots. Um, we lose the interactivity, unfortunately, but that means that 
the file size and uh, the way that the report actually handles can scale and scale and scale, um, and it's pretty pretty stable. So um, this, this seems to work pretty well in practice, and the output looks very similar. So uh, we've had successful use with, with some really big projects. Um, also, some other problematic areas with huge sample numbers. Um, tabular data becomes really unwieldy and difficult to, to visualize when you have many, many samples. So again, over a certain threshold, um, tables kind of magically turn into these kind of dot plots or, or b swarm plots or whatever you call them. Uh, so again, you can get an overview of your entire project. Um, and most people seem fairly happy with it. It's not perfect support, but... Um, if all else fails, MultiQC always saves everything it found as text files. Um, you can choose the format that you want. And this has the benefit that everything is always in a consistent um, file kind of data structure and file format. So it means you don't have to do any kind of data um, munging and kind of standardization. It's done for you. So in, in this case, you can run MultiQC as an intermediate step and then go on to do more downstream processing in, in your tool of choice. One of the things that MultiQC has to handle with is working out what to call the samples within the report. So in the simplest of cases, you, you can usually take the file name of the thing we're passing, and in this case, we can just kind of trim off the stuff that's obviously come from the program, and you end up with a nice sample name. Um, the MultiQC config has a bunch of these default strings, which it will strip off and giving you a nice sample name. But it doesn't always work. <laughs> so sometimes this, the, sample name, the file name that we get is completely irrelevant. And in that case, we usually have to go inside and try and find uh, something inside the file. And sometimes it's not always clear. So one of, the, one of the most common things which kind of can cause messy looking reports is where this process doesn't go so smoothly. Here we clearly have a single sample. But we've got two different input reports. And MultiQC, it's impossible for it to know uh, how it should handle this scenario. And so by default, if you had that particular case, you'd end up with a table like this where you have kind of lots of blank spaces where the, the sample names don't don't line up anymore. And this is a, an ideal place where you can configure multi-QC, uh, which is one of the strengths, I think. So we add in a little bit of extra config here. We tell it to chop off these strings. And now everything is resolved. The sample names match up properly, and we, we get a more concise report. On the theme of, of configuration, generally, I try to make multi-QC as easy to install and run as possible. This is, this is the, the, the main multi-QC command that most people will run most of the time, just give it a current working directory, run multi-QC, and it doesn't need anything else. But behind that, there's a ton of customization options which are saved within multi-QC, and you can access any of these. So with your own YAML config file, you can really tweak and, and customize the way that multi-QC behaves. Um, so one of the ways you can use this customization is to add in additional information into your reports, which may, which may be useful for, for downstream use. MultiQC works on the basis of samples, but the, the report itself is on a project level. And so this is an example of the type of report that we generate in our sequencing facility. And at the top, we have project level information. So we've got uh, the type of project it is and the sequencing setup and stuff. And just to give you an, a quick idea of how this would work, this is a config file that we've run MultiQC with. And you can specify kind of title, subtitle, things like that. And you can often do many of these on the command line as well. You can specify your own logos, which is nice if you want a bit of tweaking. Um, and then you can add kind of custom metadata pairs and various other things into the head of the report. One relatively recent addition to MultiQC is what I've called um, the custom content module. Um, this is designed for groups where you might have your own pipelines or your own custom scripts, which generates analysis results. But it's only ever in your lab, so it's not something that you want to write a, a module for and go to a lot of work, and it would never be published for the main multi-QC program because no one else could use it. So in order to make this a bit easier, if you have complete control of that output, if you give it the file name that ends in mqc.txt or yaml or whatever, then multi-QC will find this, and uh, it will try and figure out what to do with it. So this is an example of a f uh, such a file that would work with multi-QC. Um, you can put in these kind of comment lines at the top, which can specify a bit more what MultiQC should do with the data, but it should work, well, it sometimes works without these. Um, and you can kind of do bar plots or tables or line graphs, and anything that MultiQC can do, you should be able to do here. Um, and this is great because if you send these files to anyone else, their copy of MultiQC will also work with it. There's no customization of MultiQC here, you're just giving it uh, the information that it needs in your output file. This is great, but it doesn't always go far enough. 
So something else that MultiQC supports is writing your own Python code, custom plugin code. Um, MultiQC works with uh, setup tools in Python and has these entry points. Um, and this defines all the different modules which run, um, so you can write your own modules. Uh, and here we can see examples where there are points within the MultiQC execution where you can tie in your own custom functions. So the one near the top is, uh, allows you to add your own command line options, so your own command line flags. And the ones further down give different points within the MultiQC execution where you can add your own custom code and, and really tinker with what goes on in the internals of MultiQC. And the great way that, thing with this is that you can keep all of your code base separate to MultiQC as long as you install the two packages on the same Python environment, you still run MultiQC in the same way, but all of your code gets sucked into that environment setting. Give you an idea of what you can do with this. Um, we've recently released a, a new plugin for MultiQC which interacts with um, the GeneLogix Clarity limbs. Um, and we can use this to automatically find samples in the limbs, which the MultiQC has already got data for, and then use that to pull in project level information and also additional sample metadata. So you, you can run FastQC on your samples and then this will automatically, say, pull in the RIN score for your RNA samples or the, the, the library concentration or whatever else you want to do with it. And it uses the GeneLogix API to do that. Um, Brad, who's probably talking about BC Bio later on, uh, has they were one of the first users to have their own plugin for MultiQC. And that does customization of, of the output from the BC Bio um, pipelines so that they can get really nice output in their MultiQC reports. Um, which is really tweaked to what they're generating. We have our own plugin in-house as well, which does similar stuff with Limbs databases um, and does things like renaming the, the report by default so that we don't end up with 100 different output files all with the same file name. It's very intelligently named after the project that we're running on. Uh, and our, our plugin also, when execution is finished, it copies the, the resulting data to our web server so that we can easily interact with it. So you hopefully can see from this, this range of plugins that there's, you can do a massive amount of different things within MultiQC and extend it to do whatever different things you might want to do in your, your environment. Uh, going on from this, a project that we've just kind of kicked off, um, it's not ready for release or anything yet, but to give you a, a highlight of what's hopefully coming soon, uh, is a new project tentatively called MegaQC. That may, uh, <laughs> that may change in the future if anyone has any good ideas. Um, and the idea for this is you always run MultiQC on a single project, and that's great. But in a sequencing sensor or a larger group, maybe you want to kind of track trends over a longer time frame. Um, and the idea here is it will set MultiQC up so that it can push data to uh, any kind of API, and then we'll write a website which can sit and listen to that uh, and collect trends um, over over long term. And this is kind of the mock-up that we generated to give an idea of how this may work. So you can kind of plot different different values from MultiQC. Um, and this would be a really flexible way to in, uh, investigate and kind of dig into the data that you have in-house. Okay, that's me wrapped up. I'm a little bit early, I think, um, but hopefully that'll help the rest of the session. <laughs> um, MultiQC is totally open source. It's all hosted on GitHub. Uh, for those of you who are involved in the CodeFest the last couple of days, you'll know that there's a uh, collect all the issues there, all the pull requests, everything goes through that. So you can find more information there. There's also the MultiQC website, there's a picture of it at the bottom, um, and that has all the documentation I've written and more information about how to install it in different ways, um, more information about which tools it supports. Uh, this screenshot's a bit outdated now, should tell you how many modules, how many different bioinformatics tools are currently supported. I think the tally as of yesterday is 48 different bioinformatics tools. So hopefully covering a really broad spectrum of what you might already be running. Uh, and yeah, and you can install it through both Bioconda, PyPy, or of course your own manual Python installations. Um, if you're interested and you come and grab me later, or if you don't get a chance, this is where you can find me. And I'd like to kind of say thanks to Max, my boss, who, um, at the National Genomics Infrastructure, who let me take, kind of run off with this project idea. Uh, and everyone else who's been involved in, in contributing to MultiQC, because it's very much, I like to think of it as a community project. Uh, it's, I kicked it off, but lots of other people have helped. Uh, and the CodeFest was a great example of that, where we had loads of people involved, uh, all working on different little projects. And uh, it's really great to see that develop like that. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. <laughs>